Ready? Again, thank you for being here in the sanctuary. There's a lot more than I thought would be here. It was optional. You guys could come or not come. And what is there, about 25, 30 people here? We appreciate it so much. I got my amen section. And you're all required to amen, even if you don't usually do it. We got to make up for those that aren't here. So uh, as far as the giving, I know so many of you can't be here, so we, we do have a text to give. So you just type the word um, give to 419-834-2585. That should be coming up on the screen uh, for those of you out there. And um, you can also give on our website, journeylifecenter.org, or if you have the Givelify app, you can go there and give. Uh, our final... F- Farm to Family is going to be December 19th. The food giveaway will be December 19th. That program is ending, I believe. So uh, that'll be our last giveaway. We did one yesterday, 1,200 boxes again. Uh, We gave out every last one of them. I appreciate so much everyone that came out to help. Um, Also on that giving, if we would have had regular services We were going to receive a special offering the next two weeks for needy families, especially single moms or moms with young children. So um, if if, if you can help us in any way, um, hopefully we can still do this and still receive the funds we need. Again, you can text to give to do this, 419-834-2585. Of course, you can always give the old-fashioned way. You can put it in the mailbox. Just mail it to Journey Life Center, amen, or drop it by the... So uh, that'll help us so much with needy families. Appreciate all the food boxes, you know, all the food. We're going to be putting those together and giving them to needy families in the church. Uh, So we appreciate the response that we got from that so much. So, all right, those of us in the sanctuary got got the announcements twice, so you really know them now, right? Great. All right. That, that amen sound good. <laughs> Woo. I even got the kids yelling amen. Love it. So we're talking about the sound of music. <laughs> the hills are alive with the sound of music. It's so weird that I'm preaching this on a day that we have no music, but it's the way it is. The times that we live in. But you remember the you remember the 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 movie and how powerful it was the power of music. The thought came to me, and it's come to me several times, what what if, you know, what's the difference between just uh, listening to, in other words, you, you can get the lyrics, right? You can get the words to a song. And what's the difference between just reading the lyrics and hearing the words with the music. How many know it's a huge difference? How many times have you said, man, I really love that song, and you really had no idea what it was saying? And then you had to go back and listen to the words, and then you realized, I probably shouldn't be listening to this. (laughs) We've all been there. Oh, I didn't know that was in there. But the lyric itself, just the beat, or, or the sound of the music is what, re- what we really like. So, you know, perhaps instead of me preaching, I should sing my message. I think it would be more effective if I just sang my message, you know. It's just, it's just something about music. Isn't it powerful? I mean, look at the music industry and, and the secularization of it. And, and uh, so many times, you know, you listen to the voice, and sometimes I just listen to the words and said, you know, if they weren't singing it, this would be stupid. It, it, this, so what? They're just crying over their dead dog or something. You know, I don't know what it's. So it's, it's just something about music. And I think, for one thing, God created it. God made music. So what happened to it? Well, the devil got a hold of it. He was the worship leader in heaven. So he knows a little bit about music, and he knows how to use it, and he knows how to distort it. He knows how to use it in our lives 
to perhaps motivate us to do things that we shouldn't be doing or to have thoughts we shouldn't have thoughts about, to enjoy things that really aren't, aren't appropriate to be involved in. Music is how many, I mean, I don't know that I need to spend any more time on this. We understand music is powerful. Music is powerful. And that's why we have it in our worship services. And listen, music doesn't just set us up for preaching. Music itself is preaching. Music, the wor- you know, the words and the melodies, it's prophetic. How many, how many of you have been blessed or received a miracle in some way while you're listening to the worship? Amen. It's a, it's a powerful medium. Um, it, you know, I, I feel it this morning, not having that preparation, not having that, 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 that time with the Lord, just, just worshiping, just focusing on Him. How many times have you been at home and you just want to turn that, that, that tape on and listen to it and worship to it and you've you got your songs and your favorite music and your styles that you want, that you listen to. It, it's a powerful medium. So what, what is it about it? Let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. In Ephesians chapter 5, and a lot of these scriptures are going to be from the Passion Translation. In uh, verse 14, it says, This is why the scripture says, Arise, you sleeper. Rise up from your coffin and the anointed one will shine his light upon you. So be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom, for we are living in evil times. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. I love it. Then it says this, And don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord Jehovah. Keep speaking to each other with words of Scripture, singing the Psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. Always give thanks to Father God for every person he brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And out of reverence for Christ, be supportive of each other in love. What a, what a powerful, powerful uh, verse that is as, we, as he begins to talk about being full of the Spirit. And one of the best ways to do that is to sing. And he says, don't just sing, but sing to each other. That's why I thought maybe I ought to sing this message. I'll just, maybe you'll listen to it better. But let's look, let's look, let's dig a little deeper. Psalms 57, verses 7, 8, and 9. He said, my heart, O God, is quiet and confident. Now I can sing with passion your wonderful praises. Awake, O my soul, with the music of his splendor song. Arise, my soul, and sing his praises. My worship will awaken the dawn. Greet the daybreak with my songs of praise. Wherever I go, I will thank you, my God, among all the nations. They will hear my praise songs to you. I love that. I love that verse. Psalms 47. You don't mind if I give you some word, do you? God arises with the ear-splitting shout of his people. Whew, glory to God. That's for all those people who think our music's too loud. God goes up with a trumpet blast. Sing and celebrate. Sing some more. Celebrate some more. Sing your highest song of praise to our king. For God is the triumphant king. The powers of the earth are all his. So sing your celebration songs of highest praise to the glorious enlightened one. See, I know you don't read the Passion, so this is all new scripture to you. Sounds good. Psalms 13 and verse 6. I will sing my song of joy to you, the Most High, 
For in all of this you have strengthened my soul. My enemies say that I have no Savior, but I know that I have one in you. So I'm going to sing my song of joy. Praise God for that. You know, when, when you look at the 12 tribes of Israel, every time they marched, they marched in a certain order. And when they camped, they had a certain way to camp, three tribes on each of the four sides. But when they struck the camp and they began to march, some of you know this, and it was the rule, the first tribe, the lead tribe out of all 12 was which tribe? Judah. You all know that. Judah was the lead tribe. Wherever they went, Judah went first. When they went into battle, Judah goes first. It's always Judah, always Judah. You say, well, why Judah? That's because Judah, the name Judah, means praise. So praise ought to go before everything we do. Praise ought to be the first thing we do. Well, I'm beginning to feel it. I might come out of this chair. I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, laid back a little bit for Facebook, but I might have to let go here. I might have to let go. <laughs> praise goes it ought to be the first thing you do. The first thing you ought to do when you wake up is not complain. The first thing you do when your eyes woke up will open up should not be, uh. I'm trying to think back what I said this morning. I think that's what it was. Uh. <laughs> the first thing, you're all laughing because you know you did it. First thing we ought to do is, oh, praise the Lord. You know, many years ago, probably 20 years ago, I think Benny Hinn came out with this book. I never forgot the title, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. That ought to be, the, maybe that ought to be the first, instead of a groan, that ought to be, oh, good morning, Holy Spirit. We ought to start the day with a praise. Start our work day with a praise. Start our meals with a day. Start conversations with a praise. Amen. Start everything with a praise. Praise ought to go before. If you're going into battle, if you're, if you're facing a difficult situation, the first thing you ought to do before you pray, before you intercede, the first thing you ought to do is praise God. That's the doxology, right? Maybe we can do a song. Praise God from whom all bless. Remember that song? Wow, praise God. I'm going to stop singing because it's going out all over the world. And I don't know what it sounds like on Facebook, so I'm going to leave it alone. Let's, let's uh, watch this because Psalms 100, you all know Psalms 100, verse 4. It says, you can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. You can pass through his open... Right? It says, come, come through the gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So I like what the Passion Translation says. It said, praise is the password to the presence of God. You ought to remember that. You might need that when you die and get to heaven. What's the password? Praise. Pastor said it was praise. Am I right? <laughs> We'll let you in. We'll let you in. So praise is the password into the courts of God. Judges chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. Notice he said, Judah goes first because I've already delivered the land. Now, we have to fight, but he already did it. We have to move, but he already took care of it. 
What, what, what is it about Judah? And in Genesis chapter 49, there, Jacob's passing out the blessings. And here's what he said about Judah in chapter 49. He said, Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Praise puts your hand on the enemy's neck. Wow. Boy, that ought to get you going. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter, you all know what a scepter is, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes, capital S, that's Jesus. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Judah is special because Jesus would come through the tribe of Judah. In the Old Testament, the priesthood comes through Levi, right? But do you notice David was from Judah? The priesthood has changed. The priesthood has changed from Levi, Old Testament, to Judah, New Testament. We've changed from the law to praise, from law-keeping to praising. It's not about keeping the law. It's about praising the Lord. Glory to God. And Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah. How, How many remember the neat little story about when Judah was born? Does anybody remember who his mother was? Leah. Y'all remember Leah? Remember Rachel? We remember Rachel more because she was prettier. (laughs) Well, you got Rachel and Leah. Jacob marries both of them. Remember he got tricked? (laughs) He goes into the tent and realizes in the morning that it's... I don't know how you go through the whole night. I got to be careful. I'm on on Facebook Live here. How do you go through the whole night and not realize you're right, you're you're with the wrong woman? I mean, how? I don't know. That's one of those questions I'm going to ask Jesus when I get to heaven. How is that? But in the morning, when the sun came up, I know they didn't have electricity, but in the... (laughs) When... (laughs) Rachel, light a candle. My God. You, how, you get up in the morning and you go, you're not Rachel. You're Leah. So he's technically, you know, he's married to Leah now, and then he works for seven years. And, of course, he gets Rachel right away too, but he still has to work for seven years. Uh, but anyway, anyway, he doesn't really like Leah. The Bible said Leah had weak eyes. Now, let me interpret that. Leah was ugly. Leah. (laughs) Leah. (laughs) Leah was. I shouldn't have said that. Leah is plain. She's just plain, just nothing special. Now, Rachel is the knockout. And Le- Le- Rachel's like, <laughs> did you see that one coming? Le- you know, I mean, Rachel, Rachel would open your eyes. You know, Rachel was a beautiful woman. So you got this competition between the two wives where Jacob is more attracted to Rachel, but Rachel's not having any children, which bottom line is you got to have back then, right? So Leah, Leah says this in Genesis. She says, if I have a son, then he'll love me. So she has a son, Reuben. Jacob still, still doesn't like her. He still ignores her. So she says, I'll have another son. Simeon comes along. He still doesn't care for her. I know what you're thinking. (laughs) He may not like her, but okay, whatever. Just saying, 
something about her he likes. I don't know. So she has a third son, Levi. So now she's had three sons by him. Rachel's had none. And finally, we get this statement. I think I have it in Genesis 29. But when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her wound, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son, called his name Reuben. I already went through that. We skipped down to uh, verse 34. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now. Everyone say now. In other words, this time, I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah, and she stopped bearing children. She said, this time, I will praise the Lord. You see, we've got to stop trusting in everything else to make things happen for us. I think Leah finally realized it doesn't matter what Jacob thinks. I just need to praise the Lord. It de- you know, I, I've got to stop finding my identity in what other people think about me. And I need to just start praising the Lord. It's really just about me and Jesus and let other people do what, you know, maybe my life's not going the way it ought to go, but I just need to praise the Lord. I need to quit trying to manipulate my situation and just leave it in the hands of God. And I just need to birth a praise. And if I can just birth a praise, I'll be okay. I'll survive this if I just keep my heart right with God. Amen. It's not about other people. It's not about getting what I need. It's not about this, that, or the other thing, or whatever we think we got to have. It's time to just praise the Lord and find my joy in my praise. That's exactly what we got to do. We need a Judah. And birthing all that other stuff didn't get her anywhere. And finally, she just said, I'm just going to praise the Lord. And things got a lot better for plain Jane after that. There's no Janes here in the sanctuary. Good. Amen. This time, this time, I will praise the Lord. Say it with me, this time I will praise the Lord. Send Judah first. Get that music playing. Spend that time with the Lord. Keep a, a praise. And let me say it this way. A, keep a thanksgiving in your heart. There's nothing worse than not being thankful for everything God's done for you just because you're going through a hard time at the moment. Oh, that, that's quotable quotes right there. I had to post that on Facebook. Right? Always be thankful, and it's amazing how God will show up. There's a battle I want to share with you in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Y'all remember Jehoshaphat? Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon, Tamar. I think I got that right. Right? They're coming. They're coming against you. Then, and and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Sometimes you need to set yourself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast through all of Israel. Mm -hmm. 
And Jehoshaphat, and, and he said, listen, all of you, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed, watch this, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will, listen, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, but you will not need to fight in this battle. Oh, my, 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 my. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Going down a few verses, the army went out. And he says this, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants. You shall be established for his prophets. You shall prosper. And when he consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So we sent the praise band out ahead of the, of the army. And they're singing, praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now watch this, verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes. <laughs> and they were defeated. The Lord set ambushes, and they were defeated defeated. And what happened was they got confused and they killed each other. I love it when the devil gets confused. I love it when the devil, <laughs> when your enemies or whatever, turn against each other and leave you alone. I didn't, Jehoshaphat said, I didn't even have to fight. They fought themselves. I've always been convinced of this. The devil is stupid. Well, he knows he loses in the end. What's the point? Why did you just give up, devil? Because it, it just and and then they, they gathered all the spoils and the jewelry and and all the precious uh, jewels and they carried them off. And it said it took them three days to gather it all. Three days to gather all the loot. What a tremendous victory. What a tremendous victory. I want you to understand that our praise defeats and confuses the enemy. Why does praise, I thought about this once, why does, why does praise and worship confuse the enemy? Because the enemy, because he doesn't get it. Because he sends all this horrible stuff in your life, and your response is, Woo, praise the Lord. And that just messes with him. He says, they, this is not the normal response. Listen, I know you get it in your head. It's not normal to be happy right now. Yeah, but God is good. I might be having a bad day, but I've got a good God. I said, I might be having a bad day. You might even be having a bad hair day. But you got a good God. So, I mean, I, sometimes I don't even feel like it, but I'm going to smile anyway. Oh, praise God. See, I told someone today, that, well, I was getting my hair cut, and the, and the, and the girl said, I'm just having, I'm just, this, she's, she's, she's pregnant, her first child. She's really just, it's just like, oh, I didn't know it'd be this hard. I said, Lord, girl, you got a few months to go. <laughs> I didn't say that, but, you know, I did think it. But she said, you know, this is tough, and she, she started to tear up a little bit. 
I said, he said, I'm just not happy. I'm just, it's just, I said, you know, sometimes you just have to choose to smile. Doesn't matter how you feel. Sometimes you just have to choose to smile. Choose to praise the Lord. And when you send that praise out, you defeat, you confuse the enemy because that is not, and, and the enemy will tell you, that's not normal. You're not supposed to be happy right now. Have you ever wondered, even within yourself, why do I have such joy going through what I've been going through? You know, five years ago, if I went through this, I'd be, I'd be uh, on a drunk. I, I'd be... <laughs> I, I, I'd be tearing my hair out. I mean, this is tough. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. But now it seems I'm getting through things that years ago I, I ne- would have destroyed me. The difference is I'm walking with Jesus. The difference is he's with me now and wasn't with me then. And that makes all the difference in the world. So even though it's tough and it's hard, I still have a smile. I still have joy in my heart. And that confuses the devil. Oh, I love to confuse the enemy. So they send them out before the army. I thought about this morning, you know, because most of us have not been in live combat, I guess. Maybe some of you have. But you know what it's like? It would be like this. Let's talk about football. It's like you're in the band, right? Right? The best, oh, I can't say that. The best band in the land. (laughs) And the coach comes and tells you (laughs) that the whole defensive unit or the the whole offensive unit or whatever unit got COVID right now. (laughs) And we have no line but you. So... Instead of the normal guys that are playing defense, we're going to put the band out there. And the guys in the other team are like, (laughs) I mean, face it, there's a reason why those people are not playing football and they're in the band, and I don't mean to be insulting to band people. I'm going to get letters on this one. But the, let me just say it this way. They're not trained to play football, so you've got band members standing around like, what do we do? I don't know. How many know they're going to trample over that team, and it's, it's not going to be pretty? But something happens, and instead of, def- instead of running over them, the offensive line gets all confused and they throw the ball to the wrong people and they wind up winning the game and the band members get carried off the field and get the Gatorade poured on them. How is that possible? You know what's going to happen when you put the band out there. This is what they're doing. I mean, there's the, the guys with the armor and the bullets and the guns, they're not in front. The guys taking all the shots are the guys with the music. What sense does that make? It doesn't make sense. And that's why I'm telling you, that's why I'm coming by to tell you that your praise is powerful. Your praise may not make sense, but it's going to win the battle for you. Your praise doesn't... It doesn't compute. There's no way singing a song, that's like this old expression, you know, whistling whistling past the graveyard, right? No, no, no. That whistle's going to get you the victory. That praise song is going to get you through. It's going to make a difference. It's going to confuse the enemy. It's going gonna, it's gonna to win your victory, amen. It's not about your, you manipulating and conniving and figuring out a way or, or going to this one or that one. No. Let's just praise the Lord, amen. And I'm telling you, that praise is all you need. So they sent the band out there, and the band starts playing, and the army's behind the band and they won the victory. It doesn't make sense, but that's exactly what they did. I got to thinking about that. Which way is it, or maybe it's both, but did they win the battle 
because did they win the battle because the band was playing? Or did they win the battle because the band knew that they were going to win? Because God said, you won't have to fight. I'm going to win this one for you. You won't have to fight because the battle's already won. So I don't believe the band went out there and said, all right, boys, <laughs> it's up to us. Get, you know, who's got the biggest instrument? Put them out front. Maybe the tuba will knock four or five over on, what's that called, script? Or that thing where they do put the tuba player out there and he dots the eye and on Ohio State. Uh, Y'all are lost. What are you, Michigan fans? Come on. Boo. But here's what I'm telling you. I believe the band went out there unafraid. I believe the band went out there and, and played the, the best song that they have ever played. They played with confidence, no fear, not because they're the band, not because they're the best band in the land. They played with confidence. Oh, church, I feel it in the whole. They played with confidence and authority because God said you've already won. I'm not saying I'm not saying you're going to win your battle because you're singing pretty. I'm saying you're going to win your battle. I'm going to say you're singing because you've already won the battle. Amen. I'm giving you a good reason to sing. You're singing because you've already won the battle. Can you praise the Lord right now with me? Amen. We've already won the battle. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hosea chapter 11 and 10 says, They shall walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When, his, when, when he roars, then his sons shall come trembling from the west. You see, really, it's the roar of the lion that's leading our praise. Because Jesus came from Judah, and he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Woo, that'll preach. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he roars, that's what confuses the enemy. That's what sends him packing. There's another battle in 2 Samuel. And it says, and it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. Remember that? That's another sermon. Then you shall advance quickly, for then the Lord will go up before you to strike the camp of the enemies of the Philistines. He says, when you hear the sound in the tops of the mulberry trees, whew, you know what that tells me? I'm not the only one singing. And when I'm praising the Lord, I'm not the only one singing. You know what really gets you the victory? Is your song harmonizes with the song the angels are singing. When you sing... You're in tune with heaven, right? If you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about. You strike one string on a guitar and the next one, and the other ones vibrate. We need to strike that song that the angels are singing at the same time. Wow. And that's what destroys. You know, some people say the reason why the walls of Jericho fell down. What was it? He told them to shout, sing and shout. You know what I believe happened? How, how many have heard? How many heard the lady sing at such a high pitch that she can shatter glass? I believe when Israel shouted, they they reached. Oh, I feel this. They reached a frequency in heaven that so vibrated that the walls fell down. I can't prove that scripturally, but that makes sense to me. That they, that they shouted and their shout, their praise. Remember, they're blowing the shofars. And that, that sound, I mean, what is sound anyway? Sound is just vibrations in the air striking those little bones in your ear. 
which then translate into, into sound. That's why I believe even if you're asleep, you could pray, you can, you, this, you could play praise music while you're sleeping. Because the bones in your ear are still vibrating and they're still sending messages to your, to your brain while you're asleep. That's why for those of you who like to sleep with the TV on, be careful what you leave on. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Watch this. The victory is already won. And when you hear heaven moving in your life, sing a song of praise. Sing a song of praise with that sound from heaven. Your praise, the sound of music, the hills are alive with the sound of music. Oh, I believe it. I, they didn't know what they were singing about, but I know what they're singing about. Because I love that scripture that says, when God speaks, when God speaks, he thunders. I like that in Psalms 29. He says, he, 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 the voice of the Lord echoes through the skies and seas. The glory of God reigns as he thunders in the clouds. His, power, his, his powerful voice is so brilliant and bright. How majestic as he thunders over the great waters. He said he makes, he makes the, the deer calve. His voice births things in your life. We need a praise in our life that will change everything around us. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Would you, those in the sanctuary, would you stand with me? We're going to pray. Praise the Lord. I managed to preach and stay in the chair. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> I wanted to come out. I don't want to drive the cameraman crazy. <laughs> God is good. God is good. Father, how we love you. Oh, we praise you today. I'm praying for the touch of heaven upon us. Thank you for everyone that came this morning. I, I pray the touch of heaven upon them. You know every need, every hurt, everything from the past. Things with, that we can't seem to let go of. Whatever we need this morning, physical healing in people's bodies, financial blessings, I pray, will come to people as we speak this week. I pray that bodies would be healed. I pray that minds would be calmed. Those who can't sleep at night, I pray sleep over them. Let them rest in God. Lord, you know that these are hard times. These are lonely times. We just don't know. We're so far from normal, and we don't even know if we'll ever get back to normal. And there's a lot of fear out there. And we know that fear can actually be a spirit. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of fear over God's people. We must be cautious and use our head with this with, in this time of virus and pandemic. But, Father, don't let us live in fear. The joy of the Lord is my strength, and I'm going to raise up a song, and I'm going to keep the joy in my life. I know if the enemy can steal my joy, he can take anything. So I rebuke that in Jesus' name, and I claim the joy of the Lord in my life. God. Help us to sing the songs of Zion and rejoice in these last days. Doesn't matter what is going on in the world, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There's more strength in me pushing out than all the powers of hell pushing in on me. And, Father, people need to see us smile somehow through our masks. Somehow we need to carry the light of Jesus and the joy of the Lord. 
So I pray healing, and I pray deliverance, and I pray breakthroughs. I pray, oh, God, that you will touch people's lives. I pray, I pray that people will come to know Jesus, that they'll give their heart to him. God, make the difference in people's lives. I believe people are reaching out to you. And I pray everyone that's watching us now by Facebook, if they don't know Jesus, it's not about being good enough to get to heaven. It's about being forgiven. And I pray everyone that's watching us, everyone that doesn't know the Lord as Savior, right now, just, just, Father, let them help them to just ask for your forgiveness and ask that you would come into their lives. Come into their lives and help them to decide to live for the Lord the rest of their life. Father, we know the end of all time is near. This We may be the very last generation on the planet. The rapture is soon coming. God, make your people ready. And we'll thank you for that. And we'll praise you for that. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. And all the church says, Amen, amen. Give the Lord a clap offering and a praise. Woo! God bless all of you on, in Facebook land, and uh, we'll be signing off. See you again next week at the same time. Amen.